foreign exchange rates are annoying. Why? They give us two rates. Why can't they just give us one rate? Well, as you can see here, they often give us two rates because one is if the bank is buying and one is if the bank is selling. So these banks or bureau de change places need to make some money. So they offer two rates and they make a little bit of margin in the middle. Now that makes things a bit irritating for exams because you can have two rates and you need to decide which rate to choose. But don't worry, I'm here to explain exactly what you need to do. There's a really simple trick to make sure you're picking the right rate every time. Now with spot rates, you may well be given a range of rates and it would look like this. So you get a lower number on the left and a higher number on the right. Now, when you see this, you're going to see this terminology quite a bit, the counter and the base. The base currency is the thing you've got one of. So with any exchange rate, there will be one of something and it's the other thing that's changing. Now, the thing that's changing in this case, the Swedish krona, SEK, that's the counter currency. So the base is the thing you've got one of and then the counter is the thing that is changing, it's variable. So there's a really nice little rule when you're deciding which rate to use and this often confuses people, oh, which rate shall I use? Which one's gonna be the best? Assuming the home currency is the base. So in this example, we're assuming that US dollar is the base currency. So we're a US company or our home currency is the US dollar. If you're making a foreign payment, use the rate on the left. If you're receiving foreign currency, use the rate on the right to exchange that. So that's my really nice little rule to remember. Just check that the home currency is the base. It usually is in AFM, especially in recent exams, they've been a bit kinder. But every now and again, they'll flip it round. If that is the case, you would need to flip those round. So if you're based in America and they decided to quote it as US dollars per Swedish krona, you'd be like, oh, that seems a bit weird, that's backwards, then it will flip round. So just adding that caveat, but it's usually gonna be the case, payment on the left, receipt on the right. Remember that how you want, payment on the left, receipt on the right, whatever you wanna to do to remember that, but really important. Ultimately, the bank is always going to win. So whichever rate we choose is gonna give us the lowest amount of currency possible. Unfortunately, the bank or whoever you are using to change this money, they are always gonna win. So for example, in this situation, if we were paying Swedish Krona, we'd use the right on the left, payment on the left. So I'd choose that 8.4458 number on the left there, is that give us the fewest Swedish Krona. If we were receiving Swedish Krona, we'd use the rate on the right. So that 8.4924, is that give us the fewest dollars. When we translate it, when we receive those Swedish Krona and translate them back into dollars and divide by that number, that would give us the fewest dollars when we translate it. So they're gonna be the correct rates. And that's it, thank you for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, where I break down those tricky topics into really easy to follow steps, then subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow me on LinkedIn for more exam advice and check me out on socials. I also have my own course helping students to pass their exams. Thanks for watching.